1979 was the first full year of President Daniel Arap Moy's rule. It was a year in which Moy tried to let it be known, both at home and internationally, that Kenya had a new leader. In February, he chaired OAU talks in Nairobi that tried to end the fighting in Uganda between the forces of that country's military leader, General Idi Amin, and Tanzanian troops who had moved into the country to liberate it from Amin's dictatorial regime. As it turned out, the talks did not end the fighting. In April, Idi Amin's eight-year power came to an end when he fled Uganda after his army was defeated by Tanzanian forces in support of Amin's Ugandan opponents. In June, Moy started a four-day official visit to Britain, during which he was welcomed by Queen Elizabeth. His predecessor, President Jomo Kenyatta, had avoided such trips, preferring to conduct his international relations from Nairobi. But as important as foreign relations were, the year's biggest events had to do with the general election that took place on November 8th, the first since Kenyatta died. The ruling party Kano had made sure that Oginga Odinga and his former Kenya People's Union colleagues were barred from contesting, even though they had technically been readmitted to the ruling party. In that general election, voters threw out nearly half of the members of the previous parliament. Among those who were rejected were some of the leaders who had opposed Moy's succession to the presidency. Kenyatta's brother-in-law and powerful right-hand man, Mbiu Koinange, as well as Kihika Kimani, Masinde Muliro, and Taita Arab Towet. But voters also rejected some of Moy's supporters, among them former Mbiri MP Julius Kiano, who went down to the former managing director of Kenya Breweries, Kenneth Matiba. The general election gave Moy a chance to choose a government of his own making. He retained Moy Kibaki as vice president and Charles Njonjo as attorney general. And he ended up with a large government, 27 cabinet ministers and 50 assistant ministers, making up nearly half of the membership of parliament. More important, Moy brought into the cabinet a number of leaders who owed allegiance only to him. They included Nicholas B. Watt, Henry Cosgay, and Jonathan Nyeno from Rift Valley Province, Moses Mudavadi and Elijah Mwangale from Western Province, John Andrew Omanga, and John Okwanyo from Nyanza Province, and Daniel Mutinda from Eastern Province. These appointments were meant to balance the power that Moy already feared his Attorney General, Njonjo, and his allies, such as Godfrey Gitahi, Gigi Kariuki, wielded in the political field. As if to leave no stones unturned, in his effort to contain Njonjo and his supporters, Moy reached out to former opposition leader Odinga, who believed Njonjo was behind all his political troubles. He appointed Odinga chairman of the Cotton, Lint and Seed Marketing Board, ostensibly as a first step to more substantive appointments. That was the year that Moy also appointed Philip Ndegwa, previously Permanent Secretary for Finance, as Managing Director of the government-owned Kenya Commercial Bank. Ndegwa took over from John Mishuki, who had resigned to go into politics. Degwa's move to KCB came at a time when the country's economy was having problems. At the beginning of the year, the government had been forced to impose import restrictions in order to conserve foreign exchange, which was falling. In sports, the year saw Sheka Metha, driving with Mike Doughty, win the Kenya Safari Rally. Metha was participating in his 12th rally. In 1979, 
Kenyon said farewell to famous and popular VOK radio announcer Job Isaac Mwamto, the first son of the late president Peter Mwigai Kenyatta, former head of the Kenya National Union of Teachers Stephen Kioni, former nominated MP Mrs. Jemima Geshaga, African Indian Church leader Bishop Wellington Mulwa, and Lord Delamere son of the famous pioneering settler politician.